Jason, what are you doing, man? Jason, what are you doing, man? Nobody nods like that on grass, man. Your cousin only had one needle mark. This boy's got a few. Yeah, well, I want to know who gave it to him. If you just let us handle it, we'll do everything we can. I need your help, man. Kiss name is Trotter. Just take hold of it, baby. Let it do the work for you. Boom! You're actually telling me that James Haywood is going to kill somebody? No, but Haywood, come on, just wait, let me go! some change. Say, ma'am. Man, I'm gonna get that. I told you you could do it. All right. Let's go, cop, man. All right. Hey, man, what we gonna get, man? Hey, man, Trotter should be around here at the club, man. Hey, man, look, I told you it was good, man. He got the best talk in town. Let's be cool, man. Turned old Jace on to a taste of coke last night, you know? He said he liked to be known and try to join. Get into that powder, huh? It's off of pure snow, man. We fired up a Jay Angel dust with it, you know? Talk about getting dusted. Man, it took us a whole hour just to crawl down two flights of stairs. You dudes uh, shoot cocaine? Oh, yeah. Not me, man. Just a snort. Yeah, that's all. Man, you're wasting your bread on snort. Say, so, man, you gonna be able to get me straight today, Trotter? How much? Half a spoon. All right. You? Line of coke, that's all. Can't do you, brother. Cocaine is only happening with me here and there. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I got a stash. But that's waiting on a couple of nights with a couple of ladies. Now, if you really want to get stoned, you will split a spoon of smack with Dickie. Man, I ain't never messed with no needle before, man. You don't got to. No, 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 brother, that's vodka. Use the pan out on the uh, fire skate. That's catching the rain. Some good dope, man? Fine dope. Gonna get some even finer stuff tomorrow. So what's happening, Jason? Ten bills for what's left. That's cool. Whatever, brother. Now, when the time comes that you really want to get a joke, I'll tie you off myself.
Jason Hayward. You're the uh, cousin to that that pool hustler, right? That hangs down at Betty's. No, man. Tells me <laughs> he's family to a hoops that hangs out with a basketball. <sighs> Hey, we're. Yeah. Me and Jackson going to cruise UCLA tomorrow. Find a pickup game at Pauly. You interested? No, I told the coach I'd help him out with the junior high clinics they got going here tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. I'm up next week. So, uh, what's happening tonight? Tonight I got to go to my Aunt Edna's for a family dinner. Hey, Jace, too? Yeah, of course, Jace. You ought to find the time there to talk with him. I mean, he's been messing up bad lately. Yeah. Yeah, man. Starting to look more wasted around this place than I used to. Yeah, I know, man. And then when you try to rap a couple of words to the brother, he just turns and walks the other way. Yeah, well, he's been keeping clear of me, too, lately. You know, with basketball and everything, I haven't had time to catch up with him. But we'll talk tonight, you know. <laughs> James, James, guess what? What? Charlene's got a boyfriend. I do not. Uh-huh. Got a boyfriend, huh? What's his name? Don't tell him. What? Larvel. Larvel. You got a boyfriend named Larvel? Sounds like a real mean dude yeah, to me, Janice. No. <laughs> He's the end, she says. I said he plays the end on football. And that he drank <laughs> two beers before the movies Friday night. Not just him, all the boys I said. <laughs> Y'all better cut that out. <laughs> Jackie, Jackie, what do you want what? I want a white mustache, too. You do? How about I get you a glass of milk? No, that. All right. OK. Just this one time, OK? All right, <laughs> 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 everyone, let's see. Can't wait all night for Jason. All right, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Jason! Hey, what's happening, man? Hey, what's happening, man? I told you 7.30, Jason. I lost track, man. I'm sorry. Well, hurry and wash up before it's all gone. I ain't hungry. I'll get something later. I cooked this roast and you're gonna eat it. I ain't hungry. Hey, Jace. Hey, man, what's happening? You spaced or what? Yeah, I guess you could say a little, man. On what? Oh, you know, man, a little here, a little there. What, a little herb? Yeah. Is that it? Is that all? Yeah, man. Yo, well, look, why don't you, uh, why don't you get up and come on out for a minute? Jackie wants to see you. Jason. Jason! What are you doing, man? Nobody nods like that on grass, man. Hey, you could have burned this house down, man. What are you doing? All right, listen, tomorrow you get yourself together. You get straight. You and me are gonna do some talking, okay? Yeah, huh? man, we gonna do some talking, yeah. So try to do you right last night or what, man? Oh, yeah, man. Say, man, he say he got some stuff bad than that. Ready and waiting for you. Stuff that will blow the chrome right off a bumper. Yeah, well, let's go check it out. Come on, dudes. Follow me. Hey, it's all nice of the joints. We're crying out loud. It's Saturday morning. About 45 minutes more fundamentals. All right, here we do. We're breaking the four teams and scrimmage so everybody plays everybody. What else doing the coaching, right? Five bucks says I beat you. At what? The coaching. No, no, you mean at who wins and who loses. And I'm going to whip you. I make the distinction because, as we all know, there's a great difference between coaching and winning or losing. Five bucks. 
I don't take checks. Just see if you can stay away. <sighs> okay. Here's the way to shoot the power shot. All right, you guys, hold it down a second. Name's James Hayward. They asked me to come down here and show you guys how to play a little basketball. Now, guess you play I... in the NBA, huh? I mean, I got to see your papers, man. What? Anybody know this dude? I mean, you could be a Russian spy or something. What's your name? Abdul Rashad. What's the brother's name? That's Gordy. He's just been token, that's all. At 11 o'clock in the AM? You at least an All-American. Check the jacket, fool. He's Carver. All right, come on, enough this. Uh, give me a lot of people over here. Give me a lot of people over here. Yeah, see what kind of, what kind of left hand you got on the drive, OK? Yeah, right, line it up over I here. I might just uh, come down and check out your left hand sometime. Shoot his face, man. Listen, I want to thank you for helping out this morning. Oh, sure, man. I want to thank you, too, for uh, making it worth my while. No, wait a minute. Somebody should have warned me about that kid. Anyway, you chose him, you played him. Yeah, but that was before I knew he was flying. <laughs> Fifteen seconds left, the kid won't put the ball up. You know what he told me afterwards? What? He was into dribbling. <laughs> Believe that? <laughs> Down by a bucket and suddenly this kid's into dribbling? Yeah. <laughs> Take a check. Sure. Got an ID. <laughs> oh, hey, listen, my aunt's house is uh, just up here on the right. The, the yellow one. Right here? Yeah. Your cousin? Yeah. You know who this is? No. They were found together in a shooting gallery on 14th Street. They're both basically virgins, so you gotta figure they were steered there. By who? Nobody knows. Nobody saw it. You mean ain't nobody saying nothing? Your cousin only had one needle mark. This boy's got a few. Yeah, well, I want to know who gave it to him. Yeah, so do we. Yeah. Yeah. How bad, mister? Look, you just let us handle it. We'll do everything we can. Sorry about this. I saw him last night. I was just talking to him. Uh, I, I gotta get back. I gotta get back now. Yeah. Why don't you let me drive you? I, I'd rather walk. Jackie, where is everybody? Our house. Janice and Charlene, too? Mm hmm They were all gone. Looks like you've been crying, too. Mm-hmm. You know why you were? Mm-mm.
come on up here and sit down. I'll give you another white mustache, okay? Okay. On the Motel California, that's where I've been. Hey man, why don't you just dump that heat and save yourself the activation? Never. I don't know why. The dudes are filing his junk are honest, and they would only charge you 10 bucks to take it away. You know who owned that car before me? Somebody that must have hurt the walk. Greg Weed, that's who. Played third guard for Marquette and had 21 sets of sexy initials all over the back seat. The car don't go till the record falls. Yeah, right. And while we're at it, I got $5 that says hell will freeze over after all. I'm only one short, Bob. <laughs> hey, what? Come here, man. Wow, that's heavy. I don't know what to say. Yeah, nothing, man. Nothing. I just felt like getting out of the house for a while, you know. Thought I'd come down and clean out his locker or something. What's happening? How you doing? How's it going? Doing all right, man. Just waiting with the family, mostly. What's happening with it? They just say we gotta sit tight, you know, until they catch the dude. Hey, well, a few of us been talking with a few of Jace's buddy. Nobody knows nothing. Ain't even heard of the other guy. Yeah, it's because he's from Oakland, man. He only been on the street a couple of weeks. Strand? Yeah. So they gonna burn the junk man when they catch him? Well, they say they gotta catch him first, you know. Yeah, right. When's the funeral? Tomorrow. Yeah, well, when they do tag the dude, man. I ought to be getting this blood boiled. Damn. Uh, when did he die? Saturday. So, uh, see, we've only had it uh, four days. And you ain't got nothing yet? No, no, what I'm saying is that we haven't got a thing to go on. So when you going to? <laughs> Look, uh, Haywood, right? Yeah. You know, um, in a situation as, as cold as this, not until something breaks. I mean, after four days, though, nothing new down here breaks. You're talking about yesterday's news. We're doing all we can. Look, you, you got people on the streets. Look, we're doing what we can. Now, as soon as something comes up, we'll, uh, we'll nail this guy. And if it don't? Then we won't. Little mother, God blessed you with this child for 15 years. From the pangs of his birth and the loving and the teaching and the cherishing of him in childhood through to the painfully harsh pangs of his untimely death. You did all that you could do to the best of your Christian ability, all that was humanly possible. And after you taught him all that you know, the child made a mistake. We all make mistakes. None of us is guiltless. It was the demons of society that turned this temporary weakness of soul to a fatal end. That snuffed this young life out. You got a good and loving family. God, little mother, has promised you strength for this day. Rest for your labor. Peace in your sorrow, light for your way. God has promised you grace for this trial. Rest from above, unfailing sympathy, and his undying love. Amen. Carry on, little mother. Carry on. <laughs> My brother. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
James Hayward. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm okay. I ain't seen you since before, before. Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. You, you still in school? Yeah. Different strokes, you know. So, uh, how you been living, man? Hot, cold. Pretty bad shape, huh? Man, could I tell you some things? Like, the other day. Look, uh, Rennie, did you hear about those two guys who uh, OD'd over on 14th Street? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh -huh. Rennie, one of them was my cousin, man. Yeah? Yeah, first time out. Oh, man. It's real bad luck. Yeah. So, uh, I'm looking to talk to the dude that, that did him the favor, man. I can see that. You got a name? No, man. You got a name for me, Rennie? Oh, man, you know how it is. Hey, hey, come on, do me a solid, brother. See, I can't take nothing, James. Except if I want to do it on my case. You give me a name and then you out of it, man. You give a name and you ain't never out of it. Come on, do me a solid, brother. Come on. We're talking about my blood, man. Rennie. I know. Give me the name of that third grade teacher we had. Uh huh. Mrs. Gardner. Sure. Sure, you're right. That's it. I was thinking about it the other day. No reason. Just thinking. Yeah, well, you know, that was a while ago, really. Yeah. Before, before. Uh, uh, nothing. I don't know. Honey. I need your help, man. Rennie, you gotta help me out, man. Cat's name. Cat's name is Trotter. Thanks, man. You take care of yourself, okay? Uh-huh. Hey, hi. Just thought I'd let you know I was back. Well, welcome back. How's your family? They'll be all right after a while, you know. How you doing? Okay. I'm doing okay, you know. Ready to go. Have the police had any luck yet? No. But then you gotta realize they never do. Yeah, well, look, uh, don't be so sure about that. Those guys are professionals. Yeah, yeah, well, so's the guy they're chasing. The main thing is you and your family. Now, for what it's worth, I'm really proud of you, the way you're standing up to it all. Being the man in one family in a situation like this would be hard enough. I'm just taking care of business. See ya. See ya. Bring Grandma with me. Rocky. Oh, man. Careful, fella. Come on. Oh, get out of here, Mexican. Oh, Uta. Uh, whose canary did you eat, Abby? Well, um, hmm. I've just been uh, talking to Nancy Van Skyver. Uh, I guess it doesn't take much to make your day then, huh? Huh. <laughs> she told me that I reminded her of this big movie star. Who, Rin Tin Tin? <laughs> you ever hear of uh, John Stringer? Oh, what do you think, Abby? Yeah. Well, uh, it just so happens that he's starring in this flick down on 15th and Broad. And she told me to check it out. Yeah? So what's your name of it? Uh, Lenore Loves Louisville. <laughs> hey, this must have been after she turned you down for a date, right? 
Only temporarily. Uh, only temporarily dead. You see, the flick reads, Lenora loves all of Louisville, and it ain't exactly a family flick. Okay. Looks like she's trying to detour your desires, Romeo. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, uh, maybe she's looking to stir him up. <laughs> wrong turn somewhere? <laughs> well, I'm looking for somebody, chump. Oh, right. You're looking for somebody. Oh, uh, cool. Would you escort him up to the rim so he can see better? I'm looking for James Hayward. What's the matter? You steal your lunchbox? <laughs> no, man. That's my department. Anyway, you dudes ain't so tough. I, I bet I could teach you a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, listen, uh, Shorty, if you're gonna teach us a thing or two, why don't you do it from the bleachers, okay? James Hayward say I got a left hand that's good. Oh, and Leslie Terryman says I got a left hand that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I also can get my hands on some of the best dope around. Some USDA choice. And I'm getting rid of it each and every night outside of Johnny's. So if any of you do... You looking to get spaced, punk? I'll do you the favor, man, but when I finish, your eyes ain't gonna be seeing nothing but black and blue. Hey, man, I... Start walking, scum, now. I said walk. I said get out. Jam. What's up, man? Hey, man. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? for a day? Uh, no, no, I'm not. Thank you. I, uh, I have to be going home. Come on. Come on. Oh, no, look, have a nice day. I'm sorry. Hayward? Hayward! Hayward, what are you doing here? This is me. Wait, what are you doing here? Field work. You see, Nancy Van. Yeah, well, look, Ghosting, uh, you gotta beat it, man. I'm, I'm waiting for somebody. Yo, who's the guy on the phone? Nobody. Uh, come on, Ghosting, split, man. You're gonna mess up the whole thing. What thing? Listen, why don't I wait around for you, and then the two of us, we can take a walk or something together for a while, you know? No, not tonight, all right? I, I'll walk around with you all day tomorrow, all right? But not tonight. Who's he? Uh, nobody, brother. He was just leaving. Well, we're friends. Later, man. Hey, hey, Rollo, Rollo, come on, man. Come on, it's cool. Look, it ain't cool with me, so it ain't gonna be cool with Trotter. Oh, come on, man. I'm hurting, man. Come hey, on, no I need... No way, to... baby. Now you connect with the man later. Ghosting, you stupid. That guy looks mean. Now, what's going on? Who's Trotter? What's going on? Never mind, Ghosting. The guy's strung out, I'm telling you. What? There was this mean-looking guy in a payphone mm -hmm. who tells Hay, with me around, it's not cool, him meeting with the other guy. Man, Goldstein, you saw the way he went after that kid the other day. A dope lover he ain't. Besides, he's still the only guy on the team who can outrun and punch me. Oh, please. I can see that, but why'd he say he was hurting if he wasn't looking to score? Because mm -hmm. he ain't looking to do the dope. He's looking to do the dope pusher. He don't look sick to me, man. Hey. You guys skipping or something? Nah, temporary leave. How about you? I just, uh, I just didn't feel like doing it today, man, you know. I thought I'd stay around here and keep my aunt company. Yeah, Goldstein said he saw you last night. Yeah, he, uh, he did. He wanted to go down to the Wish Department store and watch the Walters in color. You know, Ghost Team. Yeah, he said he caught you at a bad time. Yeah, he, he, he did. Well, what was going down, man? None of your business what was going down, man. He says you were looking to get high. We told him he was crazy. Yeah, right. Hey, 
Sergeant Thorpe here thought you may be aiming higher, blood. Looking to nail the dude that nailed Jason. Hey, Thorpe. Do you have enough problems of your own to be worried about without worrying about mine? Hey. Don't be a dope. I said you don't have enough problems of your own. It's out of your league, blood. Let it lie. You know something, man? You guys don't know nothing. Let it lie, man. For who, for? For who, man? Hey, listen, man. I know these dudes are into breaking bones. Just give me the word. The word, Salami. He said, I'll take care of my own business. No goons, no nothing. So what's busting his legs gonna do? Nothing, that's what. Busting legs don't do nothing, man. I'll tell you where he is. Uh, he ain't here, man. He's sick. Now, let's get on with it. Get on with it? Right. That's 12 minutes, 12 laps. Let's go. Oh, come on, Coach. That's 13 for you, Salami. Oh. Get going, get going. Let's go. Hey, Rilo. My man. So you're the cat that wants to score big. Yeah. The name's James. Try to tell me that the dog chewed up your money again or some big kid made you hand it over. Forget it. I got to talk to you. Shoot. I'll tell you what. He's about to mess himself up real bad. I never know what you guys. What do you mean? Bad isn't good or bad isn't bad? Bad isn't blowing the dude away. What? He's going after the dude that put his cousin away. But crying out loud, Thor, what makes you say things like that? Because I talked to him. And so did Reese and Goldstein and Salami. And then you talked to the police. No, I ain't been to them yet, but I figured that since he didn't show up for school again today, that I had to talk to somebody. Hold it, Thorpe. Hold it right there. You're actually telling me that James Hayward is going to kill somebody? I'm telling you, that's how it sounded. When? Yesterday. Yesterday? What have you been doing since then? You finally figured out maybe you ought to talk to somebody about this? Hey, that's the way it is. That's all. You got a bone to pick. You pick it yourself. Pick it yourself, and then somebody else has to pick up all the pieces. This is a matter for the police, Thorpe. You really ain't from this neck of the woods, are you? So, uh, what did Hayward tell you? Nothing. I went to his house, he wasn't there. Nobody was. But look, I know these kids. They don't get ruffled unless there's a reason for it. If they say Haywood's gonna do this thing, then he is. You know, I told that kid, we are doing what we can. Which is what? Which is trying to piece something together from people that are deaf, dumb, and blind. All right. Did you get the name of the guy he's going after? No. Well, you got the area of town the uh, guy he's going after uh, hangs out in? No, oh, not specifically. <laughs> Do you happen to know what type of weapon the boy is carrying? Look, I haven't got the slightest idea, but you just find hey, when your worries will be over. Look, it's not that simple. I mean, the kid is not going to kill him with his bare hands, right? So? So. So. So I got to let the word out. He is carrying an assumed dangerous. He's not going to shoot any of you guys, if that's what you're worried about. I don't know that, mister, and you don't know that either. Yes, I do. Look, for crying out loud, he's a 17-year-old kid with a mother and a little brother and a whole lot of confusion, the likes of which he has never known before. Now, on my soul, Haywood is not going to hurt any of you guys. So don't try scaring him into it. All right, we'll take care of it. 
No guns. Hey, now, wait a minute. You come jogging on in here telling me that some kid is about to commit murder with presumably something other than raw strength, and I'm telling you we're going to handle it the best way we know how. And now you're telling me to execute as though we're conducting some kind of a panty raid. That's right, that's right. Well, it don't work that way, mister. You're going to have to give me a uh, description. Uh, I see a lot of faces every day. Yeah. Uh... It's about my height with a receding hairline and uh, wearing a purple colored jacket. Reads Bayside High. Bayside High? He's originally from Queens. You got the bread? Yeah. All of it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, man, I got it. All right. It's all yours, man. You got five blows sitting in there. You got enough there to blow anybody to hell. Are you cool on what to do? Yeah, it's, it's a little heavier than I thought, but... Just take hold of it, baby. Let it do the work for you. Boom! Wait here, I'm out, huh? Enjoy yourself, brother. James Hayward is going to do what? And I want to pull the team out of here for the rest of the day. Why? To find him. Out of the question. No, look. If Haywood's really out there doing what they say he is, he's much less likely to panic and run if he sees them first. Those kids, students, are under our jurisdiction. To put them out on the street under our sanction would leave us open to a negligence suit two miles high. What are you talking about? What you talking about? Look, what Sybil is saying, in essence, is no matter what the situation is, those kids are under our jurisdiction during school hours. We are totally responsible for them. Totally. Oh, for crying out loud. It's a police matter. Wrong. Police means guns and sirens and nervousness, and Haywood doesn't need any more of that right now. I'm sorry, Ken. It's out of the question. Jim? I'm sorry, buddy. Well, you stay, I go.
this, and Goldstein's gonna steal your position. Hey. He's playing pretty good, you know. Yeah, maybe for a white boy. You gonna be at practice today? No, not today. Why not? I got something else going. Yeah, what's that? Listen, what brings you down here, anyway? You. Well, I'll, I'll be around tomorrow. You sure about that? Yeah, man, tomorrow. Suppose you get your pad blown off today. What if this guy blows your head off? What if you just let me worry about that? Do you have any idea the ramifications of what you're about to get yourself into? Look, Coach, this ain't your territory. It's not yours either. Now, listen to me. Haywood, hey, your cousin's dead. Killing this guy is not going to pull him out of the ground. Ain't nobody looking to pull nobody out. Wait a minute, you don't. Listen to me. Now, look, listen. Listen to me. If you do this, you will not just have killed your cousin, you will have killed off your entire family. Hey, would Listen, James, you'll be a murderer. A murderer! He was only 15 years old, man! Listen, your kid brother's only five. You can't make him a victim, too. No. No, this dude is not gonna walk away You're from this, thinking, man. James, planting this guy in the ground is not gonna dent the situation two bits. You wanna come at this guy, you come at him from the other side, you stop the problem before these kids get into it. I'll see you tomorrow, Coach. No, but hey, what? Hey, oh, hey, wait, let me go! <laughs> You can turn this over three, four times and still save a good taste for yourself. It's fine stuff, huh? Oh, yeah? You got the green? How fine is it, man? You want to taste now? You got to taste now. Oh, no, no, no. I don't need no taste, Strata. You got, you know, reputation. That's cool. Yeah. That's real cool. Yeah, I, I didn't mean nothing about nothing, man. So you got the bread, then? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. All right. You, uh... You use a needle yourself, Trotter? Coke. Yeah, well, uh, I ain't so pure myself, but, uh... I don't know nothing much about these powders, you know. I thought you got high, blood. No, no, no. You must be uh, confusing me with my cousin. Who's he? Jason, man. Jason, you remember, man. I remember no Jason. Yeah, you, you remember, remember. Not, 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 You remember no Jason, man. man. You remember no Jason, man. man. Stop it, please, man. This way can to me. Please. Where'd he sit? Oh, on the Where'd couch. Where'd he sit? On the couch. I want you out of it. Please, man. Please, God, let it come. Please, God, please. Your time's gonna come, man. Your time's gonna come. Only you won't know when, will you, man? You won't know when, will you?
Hey, Gordy. Hey, man, I ain't doing nothing. I know that, man, I know. I ain't doing too much of nothing myself. What do you say we do it together, man? What do you say? What do you say, Gordy? Think you can take me? There was a time nobody could take me from 12 feet out, man. There was a time when I just couldn't leave. I've been looking for you. Nothing happened. No? No, I couldn't do it. Where's the gun? It's in the bottom of a sewer someplace. I threw it away. I just couldn't do it. Oh, I'd say that's probably because you're... Oh, come on, coach. You don't know why, because I don't even know why, man. There's a lot of stuff I got to think about, about me, about a lot of things, you know? And then you can talk, and then maybe we can both talk. But don't try to be no... Okay. Okay. According to Miss Buchanan, you are this close from flunking biology. You know, you keep your grades up, Coolidge, or I will bench you. He wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? Mac Wade is coming here to Carver High? Yes, sir. This is manna from heaven. This is like getting Bill Walton or Jabbar when he was still in high school, and I, I am going to be coaching him. Kid's that good. What, are you kidding? Don't you ever read the sports pages? Go! Cool. I got my As you can see, you can be easily replaced. Yeah, well, if I don't pass this biology test tomorrow, I'm gone. I figured you could help me study. We could cram all night. All uh, right. Yeah, I'd like to, cool, but I got something I got to do tonight. Say, man, maybe you'll hear what the brother said. Uh, if he don't pass that test tomorrow, then he's off the team, man. I mean, it ain't no other time. You got to help him study tonight. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Is that the test? No, it ain't the test. It's just the answers. You saying my son is an illiterate? That's impossible. I think the trouble is right here in this school.
the skins emerge victorious. It's a good practice, a lot of hustle. 25 laps forwards, 25 backwards, then hit the showers. Uh, Coolidge. Here it goes. What lit you up today? Nothing, just feeling good. That's just up. feeling good, huh? Well, that was all right out there. You keep that up against Jefferson, we will blow them off the court. Uh, one other thing. According to Miss Buchanan, you are this close from flunking biology. You know, you keep your grades up, Coolidge, or I will bench you. He wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? Would you? What was all that about? Grades, little Abner, just grades. I shouldn't even have to go through that stuff, man. Big Coolidge is gonna play his way through the big time. It's open. Uh, school day's over. You're eating up my time. I'll give you 30 seconds. Well, I'll make it short. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were a no, student. And... That's all right. I, I know what it's like. I, I work from first light to last, and when I'm off, I don't want to do nothing except keep my mind off everything. Yeah, well, uh, what can I do for you? Oh, right, right. I'm Charlie Wade. Ken Reeves. Pleased to meet you. I do, sir. My son is going to be enrolling here tomorrow at Carver, and uh, I'm a little worried about him, you know, coming to a new school and everything. Yeah, well, Mr. Wade... And uh, I don't want anything to hurt his chances. I hated taking him out of school like that, uh, especially since he has only a few more months to go before he graduates, but I didn't have no choice on account of my job. You see, we're from Idaho. Yeah, uh, and... Mr. Wade... I think the person you want to see is Sybil Buchanan. She's the vice principal at our school. Well, uh, you're the basketball coach, aren't you? Well, yeah. And you're who I want to be talking to. Uh, this move was a tough break for Mac. I mean, scouts were coming to see him, and it, it just looked like his future was all set. Uh, Mr. McBride, that's uh, Mac's old coach. He done everything to try and keep him there. Uh, he even offered to put the boy up himself. Uh, Mr. Wade, where is it you said you were from? Idaho? Uh, that's right, Idaho. And your son's name is Mac? That's right, Mac Wade. You mean Mac Wade, the all-scholastic high school All-American? Yeah, I, I brought this along uh, in case you want to see it. This is your son? Yes, sir. Mac Wade is coming here to Carver High? Yeah. Sorry about the writing. I guess I'm just a little, a little nervous first day and everything. Sign your name and I'll type in the information. If I can read it, that is. So he says, uh, since we've all heard the same jokes before, we call them out by the numbers. So the other guy shouts 17, and nothing happens. So he turns to the first guy, and he says, hey, how come nobody's laughing? And the first guy says, well, some guys just don't know how to tell a joke. The same goes for you, Abner. 17. Whoa, did you see that guy? Goldstein, you have to be blind not to see that guy. Man, that guy's got more decorations on his jacket than a five-star general. Or Elton John. Hey, uh, where exactly is Idaho? Somewhere between here and New York. And he's all state? Don't get excited, Goldstein. There can't be more than two high schools in the whole territory. This is manna from heaven. This is like getting Bill Walton or Jabbar when he was still in high school, and I, I am going to be coaching him. Kid's that good. What, are you kidding? Don't you ever read the sports pages? Mac Wade is about the most publicized ball player in high school since Jabbar was a power memorial when he was still Lou Alcindor. We only got nine games left on the schedule, and who's gonna beat us? I can get to the playoffs with four seals as long as I got Wade at center. And you're gonna play him? Yeah, no, no. I'm gonna put him in a cage and charge admission for people to see him. Of course I'm gonna play him. That sounds a little unfair to me. Well, of course it does. That's because you don't understand basketball. And you obviously don't understand fair play. You go through the whole season, and all of a sudden, some superstar is suddenly dropped into your lap, and you're ready to trade in the rest of your team. But what was that? Uh... Baby Seals. Yeah, Baby Seals. Ken, where's your loyalty? How's the rest of the team going to feel? Now, if this kid is as good as you say he is, 
What about the other teams in the league? Is it fair to them? Uh, Sybil, there's nothing to it. It always happens in baseball. Teams are always picking up extra players at the end of the season to help them win the pennant. Yeah, well, that's professional. This is high school. There's supposed to be a difference. Besides, what kind of pride can you take in getting to the playoffs because you had some special kind of help? Wouldn't it be more satisfying to get there on your own? <laughs> Look, uh, Sybil, you know what? What? You're right. It would have been like taking candy from the baby. The thing is, it's just so tempting, that's all. You wouldn't understand. Well, believe me, you're doing the right thing. Yeah, well, at least it won't hurt uh, Wade anyway. Uh, his missing the rest of the season won't hurt his chances for college. And I guess he can find other ways of staying in shape. Well, there's no reason why he can't at least work out with the team. That's not a bad idea. Ah, of course. If it's all right with you, I mean. Well, of course it's all right with me. Look at his record. I think it would do your team a lot of good to see that good grades and a hookshot can coexist. You know? <laughs> all men are created equal. Now, can anyone here tell me whether or not that statement has gained or lost meaning with the passage of time? Mr. Wade. Mr. Wade, I realize that this is your first week at Carver and that therefore everything must seem a little foreign to you. However, it is imperative that I have this in my classroom. Yes, sir, if you need it. <laughs> Mr. Wade, I'm surprised at you. Another outburst like that, and I'll have to ask you to leave my class. Oh, Mac Wade. Yeah. I'm Ken Reeves, a basketball coach. Hey, coach, good to meet you. How are you? You got a little time? I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Sure thing. Right, come on. Break that up, will you? So, I decided that it would be best for everyone concerned if you didn't play. Sure, I understand. I don't want to cause any trouble or anything. Ah, oh, but I want to assure your father that you're not playing here is going to do nothing to hurt your scholarship chances. Oh, I know that. It's just that my father, he's been worrying about me since I've been little. Somehow, I can't picture you ever being little. <laughs> Look, anyway, I want you to feel free to come down to the gym and work out whenever you want. I'm sure there'll be no problem if you want to sit on the bench during games, but I just assume you didn't suit up. It'll be too tempting for me. Great, that'll be fine. Good. Hey, Coach. Yeah? You played pro, right? That's right. Well, what college did you go to? BC. BC? Boston College. End of the green line on the MTA. Go Eagles. Home of Bob Smooth Carrington. Why? Well, you seem like you know the ropes and everything, and I've been getting all these letters and offers from colleges. I've been getting them since my sophomore year. You mean scholarship offers? Yeah. Anyway, I haven't made up my mind yet where to go. And I was wondering if you'd be able to help me out with that stuff. See, I got so many people coming at me all the time, I get kind of confused about it. Sure. Be a pleasure. Great. Right. Today's contestant on Bowl Your Destiny is Warren Coolidge, Carver High basketball great. His first role will determine whether or not he passes his next biology exam. Big Warren, how do you feel? I feel loose, I feel strong. I'm ready to win this for mom and dad. And the boys at the Drug Rehabilitation Center. Great. Maestro, a drum roll, please. Big Warren. And now, will you risk everything for the human pyramid? Degree of difficulty, 3.4. I have to ask my family first. The voice of the public has been heard. Gentlemen, if you please. You know, once 
Just once, I'd like to come into this gym and see a nice, simple layup drill, as opposed to something that looks like it's straight out of Barnum and Bailey. A couple more weeks, I'm going to put a tent over this place. Uh, Coolidge the ball. Gently, please. Gently. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who haven't met him, I'll play Amy Vanderbilt. This is Mac Wade. Hey, guys. Hi, Mac. Yeah, all right, easy. Uh, settle down. We all right, please? And Mac's going to finish out the year here at Carver, so I've invited him to work out with our team, if you can call it that. Now, the introductions are over. Let's start at the top of the key with the layup drill, all right? Let's go. Let's go. Join in, Mac. Yeah, right. Go ahead. OK, let's set a record. Three in a row. Let's go, Jack. Hey, are you Thor? Do I look like Thor? Oh, oh that's one. Nice. Is. Hey, what? Thor's too small for our front. I'm cool. That's two. Call All right. Two. Three. I know I can count on you, Thor. Let's go, Big Warren. Uh-huh. Good. Real good, Coolidge. All right, that's the way to do it. Let's go, go, go. You're starting to drive a little too late. I know that. It's like done. Go, let's go, let's go! Let's hear a little chatter out there. Let's go! Get that big wine. That's it. That's it. All right, there's a lesson for you. That's a good practice. That's a lot of hustle, all right? Now we're going to go to laps 15 frontwards, 15 backwards, and the showers. Let's go. See you guys tomorrow. Let's go. Hey, don't you have to run laps? No, stupid in on the team. He's just working out. Hey, Coolidge. Yeah, Big Mac? I mean, cool. You're pretty good. Thanks. Hey, if I can help you out with anything, like if you want to go one-on-one -on -one after practice or anything, just let me know, all right? Yeah, maybe. See you later. Ah! Yeah, you think he'd be all kinds of stuck up. I know, but he ain't like that. You hated his guts when you thought the coach was gonna play him instead of you. Hey, the thought never entered my mind. Besides, I held my own with him. Says who? Says Wade, that's who. Hey, listen, what's the difference? I mean, you think he really cares about playing for Carver? He can play for any school he wants to. Man, you know what he told me? He got more than 150 scholarship offers. Yeah, man, he's gonna do all the things we've been dreaming about doing. Yeah, talk about having life locked. So what? Things go right as soon as I get out of this dump. My uncle is going to send me up in the shoe business. You know what that means, huh? At least $200 a week clear. Huh? Oh, wow! 200 bucks a kitten! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Not that it's going to matter that much to you, but uh, you ought to watch it in Finneman's class. He's really got it in for jocks. What do you mean? Well, he thinks because we're on the basketball team, we expect some kind of special treatment, which he really goes out of his way not to give. Huh. Well, thanks for telling me. Yeah. Mr. Finneman? Yes. All right, take a seat, Mr. Wade. Yes, sir. All right, everybody, settle down. Mr. Wade, is there anything personally offensive you find about me or this class? Personally offensive? The man's definitely a masochist. Very funny, Mr. Wade. But I should tell you, I don't appreciate jokes on class time. However, I would consider it a personal favor if someone with your academic skills would join the rest of the class. Melissa, change seats with Mr. Wade. Thank you. Now, in preparation for tomorrow's test, I'm going to spend this period in a review of the work we've covered. Wait. Mr. Finneman, will I have to take this test since I just came to this school? Let's get something straight. In the first place, with your grades, you should have no trouble with the test. Chances are you've already covered the material at your old school. Secondly, and most important, while you're in my class, you will be expected to do all the required work. Fully aware of your circumstances, Mr. Wade. But you're not hearing a pass. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Good. 
Uh, Mr. Wade, what is the name of the small P-shaped gland located here? I broke my glasses. I, I can't see too well without them. <laughs> Coolidge, what is the function of the pituitary gland? Uh, uh. Did you do last night's reading? Yeah, well, I was going to, but what happened was, um, <laughs> I... In other words, you're not prepared. No. That's it, Coolidge. No more warnings. After class, you and I are going to see Miss Buchanan. <coughs> Mr. Wade, would you care to tell us the function of the pituitary gland? May I be excused? No, you may not. I have to go. Then try a little self-control. I'm gonna be sick. Wade! Warren, the simple fact is you're failing biology. Mr. Buchanan, dissecting frogs and reading about lymph nodes are not gonna give me a head in the real world. Now, Warren, what you know about the real world wouldn't fill a postage stamp. Now, I know the Coach Reeves has spoken to you about your grades, but they're getting worse. Let me make it simple for you. No biology, no basketball. Now, if you feel you need it, I can't arrange to have somebody tutor you. And not to hang around with some four-eyed freak with pimples and a slide rule? No, thanks. Okay, have it your own way, but if I don't get any better reports from Mr. Finneman, basketball is out. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Miss Buchanan. Fine. You may go. One of these days, I'm going to be a principal someplace. And when I am, the first thing I'm going to do is abolish team sports. And what do you think that'll accomplish? Over a period of time, the elimination of the prima donna athlete. It's not bad enough I have a Coolidge to deal with. Now I've got Mac Wade. Wade? <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think that what some of the students say about you is true. What's that? That you have a personal ax to grind against jocks. That's absurd. Well, then why would you lump Mac Wade in with some of the other jocks around here? You've seen his transcript. I don't care what his transcript says. The kid's a wise guy and a clown and wouldn't answer questions when I called on him. Superstar or no superstar, if he doesn't measure up, he flunks out. Okay, I uh, don't expect you to handle it any differently. I have your support on that? Of course. That's what you think. You can't have read me the riot act this morning. Forget about being benched. If I don't pass that test, I'm gone. Don't worry about it, man. If worst comes to worst, we can always get way to take the place. <laughs> okay, settle down. As you all know, the next game on the schedule is against Jefferson. Jefferson, please! <laughs> Uh, now, look, hold it. Contrary to popular opinion, they're not just going to roll over and play dead for us. Don't look at their record. One and 23. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they're a lot better than they look on paper. That is why we are going to have a game condition scrimmage today. In shirts, I want Coolidge, Haywood, Gomez, Salami, and Goldstein. Right. In skins, Wade, Thorpe, Jackson, Reese, and Vit uh, Vital. What? How do you say that? Nicholas Anthony Vitalia. Vitalia. All right, let's go. Uh, Coolidge, you better pass that test tomorrow. What is it? Biology. Yeah, that's right, because as you can see, you can be easily replaced. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right, everybody got a man? All right, let's go. Let's go, Coolidge. Oh, cool.
out there. No laps today. Hit the showers. Wade. Yeah, You're a great ball player. Hey, thanks. Okay. Okay. Now listen up, you guys. Settle down for a minute, will you? Listen up. Just to show you all how great the rewards for hard work and hustle can be on this team, I've decided to call off tomorrow's practice. Hey! hey. hey. Uh, you guys hey. earned it, but I want to see you here on Friday, on time, ready to go to work, all right? All right, you got okay. it. Okay. Okay. Hey. Hey. Nice move with that day off. Hey. Hey. Coolidge, what's your problem? Why you think I'm depressed. I don't know. What are you depressed about? You know. You saw you rolled all over me. Yeah, well, so sweet. Rolled all over you. Now, listen. Wade is a great ball player. You're not used to being challenged like that. You did just fine yeah. out there. There's nothing to be depressed about. I guess I'm just jealous. He's got all them scholarship offers and all that. Yeah, well, uh, you know, basketball isn't the only reason that Wade's getting all these offers. He's also maintained a high academic average all through school. You seem to be forgetting about that. I'm not forgetting about it. It's just the school don't come easy for me like it does for some people. Well, Wade's just one of those guys. Uh, Look, uh, Big Warren, you mind if I give you a little advice? Yeah. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and hit the books. What? Yeah. Oh. Why don't you uh, see if you can get Wade to help you out, man? See, maybe he can help you study. Are you crazy? Why not? He's the one with all the brains around here. I can't do that. I don't want him to think I'm a dope. Why don't you just swallow your pride, man, and just go ask the guy? Hey, if you don't want to ask him, I'll help you study. I'll ask him. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, Matt. Yeah, cool. Listen, man, I need a favor. Remember when you said if I need any help, you'd uh, help me? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, if I don't pass this biology test tomorrow, I'm gone. I figured you could help me study. We could cram all night. All uh, right. Yeah, I'd like to, cool, but I got something I got to do tonight. Maybe some other time, huh? Uh, say, man, maybe you'll hear what the brother said. Uh, if he don't pass that test tomorrow, then he's off the team, man. I mean, ain't no other time. You gotta help him study tonight. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Hey, hey, what's going on? I need this, man. Uh, nothing. What's your problem, Wade? There's no problem, coach. No, there's no problem. He was, uh, just leaving, that's all. Yeah, he's got something real important to do. Like slop the hogs. Thor, right here. What's going on? Man, I feel like I'm walking the last mile. Hey, don't worry about it. You'll do fine. I can't help it. I'm real nervous. You know, I once read somewhere that when you're real scared of something, you ask yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen if it came true? So what's the worst thing that could happen if you fail the test? I lose my eligibility and I'm off the team. Right, and what's the worst thing that could happen if that happened? I can't play basketball, I don't get no scholarship, I don't go to college, and I end up peddling pencils on some street corner someplace. It's funny, uh, when I did it, it worked. Tishman? Present. Vitriano? Yo. Shore? Here. Openden? Here. Reed? Here. Wade? Wade. Matt Wade is here, Miss Buchanan. Okay, send him in. Okay, thank you. She'll see you now. Have a seat, Matt. Mr. Finneman tells me you skipped his biology test. Do you have an explanation? I just didn't think I had to take the test since I've only been in school a few days. It just doesn't seem fair that I should have to take it. Well, that's a very good argument and a very poor excuse, but uh, we're the teachers and you're the student. As long as you're here, we decide what's fair. Now, Mr. Finneman has scheduled a makeup test for you. You are to take that test. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. McKenna. If you don't, you're going to be in for a lot of trouble. Do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Look, Mac, we're not trying to punish you. But you do have a wonderful future ahead of you. Don't do anything that might ruin it. You've only got a few more months to go before you graduate. It would be a shame to mar your record now. Okay? Yeah, okay. You may go.
It's open. Lock's been broken for three weeks. Oh, ho! What brings you down here to the bowels of Carver High? These are for you. Huh? You, uh, looking for another job? What is this? Well, I took the liberty of peeking. They're calls. From the basketball coach at Duke University, the basketball coach at the University of Kentucky, a call from the coach at Arizona State, et cetera, et cetera. Starting, it's starting. Word's probably out that Wade is now here at Carver High. You know what that means? No. It means that every college coach in the country is going to be breathing down my neck until Wade decides exactly what school he's going to. You know, I really shouldn't complain. It's kind of nice having a basketball player whose biggest problem is whether he's going to go to Indiana, Marquette, UCLA. Yeah, well, maybe for you, but not for me. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing, except I'm starting to wish I'd let you put Wade on the team. What, now you want to put some money on Carver to win? No, no, I'm just wishing he was on the team so I could threaten to kick him off. I don't think I want to hear this. No? Oh, okay, well, if you don't want to get involved. <laughs> hey, wait, hey, wait a minute, hold it, wait a second. Come here. Have a seat, what's the problem? I'm not sure. But his class performance is not only far below his grade average, it's not even passing. And on top of that, teachers are complaining that he's inattentive in class and on occasion even disruptive. Disruptive? You know, making jokes, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, uh, now, what do I know? But he doesn't strike me as the class clown type, you know. Me either. That's why it's so confusing. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's because he's in a new school trying to make the change, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, maybe, but that doesn't explain why he skipped Mr. Finneman's biology test, which, according to Wade, he didn't think he had to take. Now, I was hoping because his grades are so good that he'd be an influence on the rest of the team, but it looks like it's going to be the opposite way around. But I, now, there you go again. Don't start with the members of the team. Don't blame them. From what I can see, uh, Wade isn't making a whole lot of friends in the locker room either, you know. What happened? Well, I'm not too sure, but as I get it, Coolidge asked Wade to help him study for Finneman's exam... And, uh, Wade very politely said, no. Oh, well, the dirty dozen must have loved that. That's right. I got there just in time. I thought that maybe we were going to kill him. I hate to admit it, but maybe he's going the prima donna route. I mean, with a future like he's got in front of him, maybe he just figures he'll mark time until graduation. It's kind of a shame, too. He's a nice kid. Yeah, well, maybe he's got a problem at home, you know. Well, I'll sure find out tonight. I'm supposed to go over there and help him sift out the uh, scholarship offer. He's got about 150 of them. Oh, good. See what you can do to straighten him out. Finneman is on the warpath about Wade, and I promised I wouldn't give him any special treatment. And it would be a shame if he jeopardized his future because he tried to slide by the last few months. So see what you can do, okay? Sure. You'd be coming. You hungry? I have some leftovers in the trailer. Oh, thanks. I ate before I came. Ah, well, how about a beer, then? You look like a beer drinker to me. Matter of fact, I come from a long line of them. <laughs> Great. Max in the trailer. Uh, Mr. Wade? Call me Charlie. <laughs> OK, uh, Charlie, uh, could I speak to you privately for a minute? Sure. What's on your mind? Well, I was wondering if uh, Mac was having a problem that I and the other teachers should know about. What kind of problem? Well, I really don't know. That's why I wanted to ask you. I thought maybe it was something here at home. Yes, uh, he has. I know about it. Me and that boy are pretty close. Why are you asking? Well, uh, Mac is having problems at school. Some of the teachers are complaining that he's just not doing the work. Huh. That's funny. Mac never had no trouble at school before. Uh, he's always been a good student, always brought home good grades. Yeah, well, that was my understanding, too. That's why I thought maybe there was some trouble here. Well, let's go in and find out. Thanks. Come on in. 
Hey, Coach. Hey, what do you say, Mac? I was just studying for Mr. Finneman's biology test. Oh, oh. <clears throat> Mac, Coach Reese says you've been having some kind of trouble in school. Oh, I think it's all taken care of now. Uh, I had to talk with Miss Buchanan about it. Oh, well, good, good. Miss Buchanan does have a way of straightening things out. That takes care of that. Why don't I get that beer and, Mac, you get them letters the college has been sending you? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Holy cow. Is that the test? No, it ain't the test, it's just the answers. Where's the 10? What 10? The 10 bucks. Hey, nobody told me about any 10 bucks. Come on, you think my friends in the Mimeo room work just for school credit? Listen, I ain't got 10 bucks. Okay, how much you got? I ain't got all day. It's multiple choice, just uh, write it down your arm or something. I don't like it any better than you do, but what choice do we have? Yeah, well, you don't have to suspend him. Yes, I do. Short of committing a criminal act, this is about as serious as you can get. And it's not as if he wasn't warned. You talk to him, I talk to him, Finneman talk to him. Yeah, but there's got to be some other explanation. It doesn't make any sense. Why would he jeopardize his whole future doing something so stupid? I don't know, but he was caught red-handed. The only thing that needs explaining is how he thought he could have possibly gotten away with it. As it turns out, he never would have, even if Finneman hadn't caught him. Why not? Because he had all the wrong answers. The answer sheet we found in his pocket was for a different test. Finneman purposely switched tests so Wade couldn't get the answers from the students who had taken the test the day before. And obviously, Wade didn't even bother read the questions. I tell you, none of this makes any sense. I agree. Maybe there's something psychological. Maybe the kid is self-destructive. But the only thing we've got to go on are the facts. Have you told him yet? We've sent word to his father. I'm going to see to both of them tomorrow. Uh, anybody mind if I take home a copy of Wade's test paper? For what? I don't know. I just thought I'd look it over. Maybe I'll find something. It's okay with me. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. The major function of the endocrine system is transportation. Chemical reaction in plants resulting in the creation of chlorophyll is uh, photosynthesis. Everybody knows that. It's the answer for all of the above. I don't believe it. All you have to do is read the questions. I didn't even bother to. Sorry, Pa. I just didn't know what else to do. I was scared. I don't even know why they made me take that test in the first place. Well, if we go up to school tomorrow. We'll get it straightened out then. No, don't, Pa. Why not? This school's not like the other school. I don't like it. They keep saying I gotta do things that I didn't have to do at the old school. 
Why can't we just leave it alone and go to another school? Mr. Wade? Hi. Right, come on in. Man. Sure. All right, Max here. Sit down. I suppose Max told you about the trouble he's in in school. Yeah, I'm going to straighten it all out tomorrow. Yeah, well, I'm afraid it may not be quite that easy. Why not? Well, Mr. Uh, Charlie, cheating on an exam is a very serious offense. It has to go on Max's record, and it could have an effect on his academic standing for college. Can I be excused? Why, are you sick or something? No, I just feel like I need some air. Uh, Mac, all the answers on your test paper were wrong. Wrong? You didn't know that, did you? You didn't know that because you didn't bother to read any of the questions. Either that or you couldn't read the questions. I just didn't have my glasses on. No, I don't think that's the reason, Mac. What are you trying to say? Well, Mr. Wade, I don't think that Mac can read very well. <sighs> what are you talking about? If he couldn't read, don't you think I'd know about it? Yeah, well, I could be wrong, but... Well, you sure as hell is wrong. Here, Mac, read this. Dear Mr. Wade, we would be pleased if you would accept our invitation to visit Arizona State University with an eye towards con, con considering considering us when the time comes for de deciding your college future. Please advise us. Advise. Advise us when such a visit would be uh, convenient. Convenient. We will be glad to make all travel arrangements. What? Ever you decide, good luck in your college career. Yours truly. You see, he can read. I think we better call in Mr. Wade. Send Mr. Wade in, will you please? Come on, what's the verdict? Not good. Mr. Wade, have a seat, please. Will someone tell me what's going on around here? Mr. Wade, we gave Mac a test this morning. It's called the Scholastic Reading Comprehension Test. And according to the results, he is a group two functional illiterate. You're saying my son is an illiterate? I'm sorry. That's impossible, because he ain't never had no trouble in school before. You wanna know what I think? I think the trouble is right here, in this school. Mr. Wade. Mr. Wade. How can something like that happen? Kids graduating in less than six months. Before coming to Carver, I taught at a rural school. I saw it happen. A kid's a slow learner, but you don't have or want to take the extra time to work with him, so you pass him on. 
In Wade's case, when he started blossoming as a basketball player, his teachers probably went easy on him. All it takes is one. And then all the other teachers don't want to feel like they're the only ones who are standing in a kid's way by flunking him. What about his transcript? Obviously a total misrepresentation of Wade's scholastic performance. Whew. Well, so what are we supposed to do now? He's going to graduate in just a few more months. I don't see how he can. Can we do that? Stop him from graduating? We have a duty and a responsibility here. And furthermore, the question isn't can we, but should we? If we don't, we're just as guilty as all those other people who just kept letting him slide by. Well, flunking Wade now could have a tremendous effect on his life. Do we have the right to interfere like that? Oh, you're right, Finneman. As long as he remains a student at Carver, we don't have any choice. He can't graduate. Did I? No, no, you didn't, Mac. See, back in my old school, I didn't hardly have to take any tests. I think that's why I got so scared about that biology test. It was the first one I had to take in about three years. Uh, Mac, I don't know exactly how to explain all this to you, but I want to be the one to try. According to your test scores, you've got a long way to go before you can graduate high school. Six months ain't that long. Yeah, well, it could be a lot longer than that. Uh, you're gonna have to spend at least another year here at Carver. I don't understand what you people got against me. I never had no trouble like this at my old school. Yeah, well, the teachers at your old school thought they were doing you a favor, but they weren't. You haven't learned the things that you have to learn to graduate high school. One of the reasons is that you can barely read, Mac. I can read. I've always been a little slow, and I have a trouble with a few words, but I can read. Now, your reading level's sixth grade. We have no choice but to hold you back. We can't graduate you. You won't have to. Come on, Mac, we're getting out of here. What do you think you're doing? I'm taking him out of this school. He's had nothing but trouble since he's been here. Well, what's that gonna solve? Look, what are you gonna do, take him to another school? They're bound to react the same way we did, Charlie. It's Mr. Wade, you. He'll catch up with you sooner or later. So you mean to tell me that there's a chance a Wade will graduate anyway? Yes, if they accept his transcript. Yeah, but the transcript's as phony as a $3 bill. But it's not forged. No one tampered with it. It accurately reflected the grades his teacher gave him. Now, Carver or any other school is obliged to accept it. So you mean there's nothing we can do? Nothing but pass on the information when we send his transcript to the next school. Yeah, well, they're going to react the same way that we did. So, uh, what then? Maybe they will, or maybe they won't want to deal with it. Ken, the sad fact is there are a lot of teachers who just don't care. Gee, you know, I really feel sorry for the kid. Of course, if he stays healthy, he'll probably sign a pro contract that'll make him a millionaire before he's 21. He'll probably never do a day's work in his life. That's true. But what about the kids like Wade who will? What happens to them? Hey, coach. I passed.
Think you're gonna be in town, though? CJ is gonna flip out. Have you been in touch with him yet? Cool, let me have the number, man. Hey, give me the number, man. I like you a lot, D. More than anything in this whole world. Are you modeling now? Every day. Are you? What is that supposed to mean? I'm in love. Uh-huh. And I'm getting married. It's you and Dolores, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. When did you two decide all of this? I get you money. A thousand dollars. Got to have more than that. Name it. No brains. The only disco we had a half decent chance of getting into. Why'd you show it to him, Thought? Hey, how'd I know he was actually gonna read it? I mean, besides, you guys slid in on your IDs. Well, that's because ours didn't say we had blonde hair and blue eyes. Hey, and next hey. time I go with you anyway, remind me to. You know who that is? That's Dolores Ray, man. What are you talking about? That's her. Dolores? Jackson's Dolores in the flesh. Oh, I thought she moved up north a year ago. She did. She's looking good. She sure is. So we say we perform our duty and uh, welcome her back home. Hey, Dolores. That is you, isn't it? Yes. I'm Morris Thorpe. I play ball with CJ, remember? Sure, that's right, Morris. I guess you couldn't forgive me, huh? Walter? Warren. <laughs> uh, I'll save you the trouble. Milton Reese. Hey, I'm sorry. It's been a while. Hey, listen, it's OK, really. So when'd you get back into town? About a week ago. Oh, did your father transfer back? No, they're still in San Francisco. I came down by myself. Oh, yeah? Why'd you do that? I mean, the Bay Area is a pretty mellowed out place. Because I quit school. And San Francisco's not the right place for the kind of work I do. Oh, well, what do you do? Model. Oh, yeah? I wouldn't doubt it for a minute. Uh, listen, why don't we all sit down? Hey, they in the market for any macho models? Yeah, he poses real good with a feed bag and a wagon. Uh, so, Dolores, uh, you think you're gonna be in town, though? CJ is gonna flip out. Have you been in touch with him yet? No. Uh, I've been busy, you know, just getting in and everything. Oh, yeah? Are you, uh, going with somebody or something? No. Well, then we can tell him to call. Are you listening? No, not yet. Well, that's okay. Just write it down right here. I'll sleep with a sling on this arm tonight. I don't blame you. Who knows where this hand has been? Uh, listen, the club seems pretty boring around here, but if you want to... Oh, look at this. 9.30, and I'm meeting with a photographer on the west side at 10. I gotta run. Nice seeing you guys. It's a real cool glass of water. Some guys have all the luck. What y'all got the grant about, sir, early in the morning? 
Guess who we saw last night? No, no, I say we don't tell her. Let's see if she calls. You think she will? If her brains match her look, she Wait, won't. Come on, man, what y'all talking about? Oh, just a bosom buddy of yours is back in town. From San Francisco. Dolores? Of course. Hey, you saw Dolores, man? Yeah, uh, it's cool. How's she doing? Uh, she's doing okay, Jackson. Got a real cute kid. Oh, come on, man. How is she? Where is she? Well, you can find out for yourself. You see, she uh, gave us her phone number. Cool? Well, let me have it. And it hasn't even listed either. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> well, cool. Come on. Cool, let me have the number, man. Hey, give me the number, man. Cool, what you doing, man? What? Cool, what are you doing, man? 555 <laughs> So you split school? Well, I left home first. You know, I really never got along well with my parents. Leaving school just kind of followed that. But that was OK. I wanted to be on my own anyway. <laughs> Don't look like you're doing too bad by it, either. What'd you do? You just walk into somebody's office, say, here I am, start snapping up. No, it didn't really work that way. I met somebody. A photographer who told me that I had what it took and that he was going to help me get started. Did he produce? He produced. He got me work. So why'd you leave? Well, if I'm going to be the best, I've either got to be in New York or Los Angeles. They wanted to fly me to New York, but I thought that, well, you know, with the movies being here, too, hey, this was a place to go. I bet you got a ton of those big spenders falling all over you with their fancy rings and watches and big fancy cars. Curtis. Hey, it's cool. I mean, a uh, classy chick like you kind of comes along with the territory, you know? What about you? How are you doing? Are you still playing basketball? Uh, yeah. Are you still good? It's just high school stuff. It ain't nothing. It was something to you last year. You were real good. Real good. Hey, look. I don't suppose you want to come to a game tomorrow. I don't think so. I'll be working all day tomorrow. Okay, it's a night game. Oh. Hey, look, you don't have to acknowledge me or nothing. Just come and let the crowd look at you. I'll see. Yeah? Maybe. I'll see. Hey, you're exactly that knucklehead, Jackson. Spot in the back, that's why he wears this all the time. <laughs> Come on, man, cut it out. You mess up my thing here, man. Hey, hey, CJ, she didn't even say she was coming for sure. Well, just in case she does, I want to be ready, understand? Uh, <laughs> hey, you smell something? What is that? That's some cologne, man. Some really expensive stuff. Expensive. Must be industrial strong. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You ain't going to the court wearing that stuff, are you, bro? If he does, he's going to score 50 points because no one's going to want to go near him. <laughs> of what happened last year when we played Vernon High School. Uh, Haywood, you threw away five passes. Thorpe, you and Gomez fouled out simultaneously before the end of the third quarter. And uh, Coolidge, you missed seven out of nine free throws. Yeah, and you got two technical fouls and we lost by one point in overtime. Yeah, all right, let's make sure that none of it, I mean, none of it happens again, all right? Come on, let's go. Let's go! Hey, let's get him! Hey. Hey. Creases in your shorts? Oh, that's cute, Jackson. That's real cute. Hey, 
I heard you got a friend coming. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, I want you to know I'm gonna feed you the ball every chance I get. Thanks, man. Hey, friends do for friends, right? Right. Right. Hey. in the back of my head. I guess you shouldn't have been looking in the stands. It's worth it. Well, look at the bright side. You won and sent the crowd home happy. You know, I don't know if it was more cheering when you walked in or when we walked off winners. <laughs> this where you live? Uh-huh. You know, I'm gonna own me a building someday. Yeah, maybe even this one. And I'm gonna have me a whole floor just for my lady to lounge in, if she wants it. I better go inside. D. I'm still stuck on you. You shouldn't be. Things have changed. But I am. More than I ever was. I better go inside now. D. Can I see you again? Good night. Is it? Candy sent me. I'm Charlie. Uh, Candy said you'd be expecting me. Come on in. Do you want a drink? Uh, yeah. Scotch all right? Sure, yeah. I guess, I guess you want to take care of the business part first. <laughs> it's, uh, 50, right? That's close enough. I, uh, thought I'd drop this off. You're late. You said you'd have it on my desk first thing this morning. Yeah, well, my morning start a little later than most. The way your team plays most of the time, I can see why. Yeah, it's your team, too. Where's your school spirit? If you don't mind, I'm glad I don't have a season's ticket. Well, I can't blame you now that it looks like the highlight of our game is going to be Jackson's old girlfriend. Oh, uh, you mean Dolores Ray? You know her? 
Not well. She transferred out the year you got here. Well, she's sure back now. Jackson couldn't take his eyes off of her last night. I finally had to bench him. <laughs> I talked to her briefly after the game. She's doing some modeling now. Well, she sure is a pretty girl. I'm sure she'll do all right for herself. Yeah, but you know, modeling's such a competitive business. It's a shame she doesn't have anything to fall back on if it doesn't work out. What's well, not to work out? I mean, even if the modeling thing falls, a girl like that would make a nice catch for some guy. She'd probably end up living happily ever after with her hubby having babies. Just have a seat. We'll call you. How you doing, sister? Seen you on the street. Your man do that to you? No. Some freak. You have a name? Ernie. Charlie, I don't know, something like that. I'll remember it. Your man take care of him? I don't have one. Why not? Because he would leave me looking worse than last night's John did. He'd do it for your own good, baby. Later for that. He won't let you go. You know that. Yeah? Well, I have already gone. Hey, you go back to your man. Because with those freaks out there, you're just asking to be messed with. Well, nothing says I have to stay on the street anyway. No? No. What else do you think you're going to do, baby? Things. Miriam LaRue. <laughs> Things. <laughs> Things. <laughs> I'll see you around, honey. John, you sent me, had a bad way about it. This is Pammy. She just came off the bus from Plainville, Texas. <laughs> she just in and don't know nobody. She wants to be in the movies, and I'm gonna help her. I'm gonna start with Billy D. Williams. This candy says I've got what it takes. <laughs> Why don't you get yourself some and a uh, coffee for me? Billy D. Williams? I'm gonna give her to my man Lobo, and he's gonna love me for it. I'll be his bottom lady again. Oh, you gonna do that for her, huh? Hey, get off of me. I got you working last night. He was a freak. He paid up, didn't he? And you still talking and walking around what today. I'm saying what I'm is... saying is it comes with the territory. You ain't no better than anybody else. And beat on or not, I'll take my slice of last night's action. Are, are you an actress, too? No. I'm a model. You make the party tonight, man? Nah, I think I passed, man. I got bigger plans. Like what? I'm gonna take the lawyers out to our old special spot. Uh, not that we can forget anything, but exactly where it was that you used to steal her away to. <laughs> The observatory. Uh, observatory? That's for parking. As in cars? One of which you ain't got. 
What are you gonna do, Jackson? Take her up there in your uncle's garbage truck? Nah, man, take the RTD. And then we're gonna take a nice little blanket and spread it off in a corner somewhere away from everything and then just spend the evening enjoying ourselves. Come on, Jackson. Who are you trying to kid? You never really made it with that girl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let this smile fool you now. See, I got it straight from the horse's mouth. Libby Jones used to be best friends with Dolores, and she told me... Just keep your mouth shut. You hear me? Hey, man, take it easy. Right. I said keep it on that. Oh, help, help. What's going on here? What is this? Reese Jackson what? Look, I didn't mean to push no wrong button, brother. It's cool, man. Oh, everything's cool now? Oh, good. Now that we're one big happy family again, can we get to it? First team shirts, second team skin. Let's go. Oh. Jackson is touchy, ain't he? Yeah, looks like she's got the brother hook, line, and sinker. I heard that. It's okay. You know, you gotta watch walking in your sleep. You can really hurt yourself. Yeah. This is fun. Sit down, and make yourself comfortable. Hey, uh, I got some candy kisses here. I remember how you used to like them. That was a long time ago, Curtis. D. I've been by myself since you've been gone. I mean, I haven't been with a girl. Really been with a girl. Curtis. Because I've been waiting for you, hoping that you'd be the first one that I'd be with. Before, when I talked to you or anybody about this girl or that girl, that's all it was, talk. Never been with anyone, Dolores. That's all right. That's fine. I like you a lot, Dee. More than anything in this whole world. I always have and I always will. Things have changed. Not with me, it hasn't. And I don't care where you've been or who you've been with. It just don't matter.
around. Down here? Where's she from? Can you do me? Well, a couple of yards my way, and I'll see what I can do. You got a name? The Lord. It's open. Hey, right, Coach. What do you say, Jackson? What are you grinning about? I'm high on life. I've been born again. Well, in your case, Jackson, I'd say once was quite enough. No, seriously, Coach. I'm in love. Uh-huh. And I'm getting married. The what? Well, we're getting married. When? Oh, this June, about 15 seconds or so after I graduate. It's you and Dolores, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. When did you two decide all of this? Well, I've always known it. Since the 10th grade, to tell you the truth. Oh, that long. So you popped a question to her last night, decided on a June wedding this morning. Is that it? Well, we haven't actually discussed it. The date, you mean? No, the wedding. You mean, Jackson, you haven't actually asked her yet? Well, that's just a formality. I'm going to ask her tonight. Oh, Curtis. Hey, Coach, we're in love. She's going to say yes, it's in the bag. Love doesn't pay the bills, Jackson. What about a job or a college education? You got it all figured out, Coach. See, City College has this great business department. And since I've always been good with numbers, I figured I'd go there part-time until I get my degree in accounting. And from then on, it's Fat City. What's the big rush, Jackson? Whatever happened to the good old two-, three-year engagement, you know? I can't afford to let the competition get in. Hey, I know what the old songs say. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, never get married to a stone fox. What would you do? Something like that, Jackson. But that song don't play for me and Dolores. I mean, she loves me, I love her. And once the word get out, the other dudes will quit banging at the door. Well, Jackson, I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Uh, Jackson. Yeah? Don't forget to ask her. <laughs> okay, Coach. She is, fellas. The ring of responsibility. Might look small, Jack, but that little thing could just as well be steel handcuffs. Well, the tighter I'm fastened to that girl, the better. Off the deep end. Holding the anchor. Yeah, well, I hope that someday you'll know the thrill of victory as opposed to the agony of defeat. Can I help you? Yeah, by not trading him that ring. Wishful thinking. When you're a model, wishful thinking is about as close to cake as you should come. How are the jobs going? Oh, fine. I've been real busy with this latest layout. You know, long hours and all of that. But I can't complain. It's glamorous and it pays real well. I'm so glad everything's turned out so well for you. Listen, if you get a chance, would you uh, drop a copy of the magazine off? I'd really like to take a look at it. I'll do that, Miss Buchanan. Okay, great. Take it easy. Bye-bye.
Hi. Hi. You been waiting long? Oh, about 15 minutes. It's worth it. Where you been? Shopping. You get anything? Uh, not much. Hey. I've been shopping too. I found something I hope you like. What? What is it? <laughs> D. I'm gonna be something one day. Something good and decent. Something that someone can be proud of. Do you believe that? Yes. And I'm gonna have me a job that's gonna say, you gotta wear a jacket and tie. And the only clock I gotta punch is gonna be my own. And that's gonna happen. I know that. And everything's gonna be great, just like I always dreamed it would be. As long as I have someone to share it with. Share it with you. Please. Jackson, I thought you had to study. Get out. Hey, baby. I've been looking for you. I said leave. And I said I've been looking for you. I'm finished. I am out of it now. I'm never tricking again. Seen you out on the stoop with that job. He wasn't any trick. He wants to marry me, and I'm going to. He know what you are? Not once has he known what's been making you tick for the last year. Please. I own you. Here and here. Got it? You walk when I say you walk, and not before a dig. He'll be back. And when he does, I'll lay a little life on him. I'll get you money. A thousand dollars. <laughs> Two thousand. <laughs> Two weeks work, baby. That don't do nothing for me. I got to have more than that. Name it. You want out? Then you send me out of here with another body. Another girl? Another Dolores. Another sweet young thing. Where am I going to find that? That's your problem, Mama. Bring me the baby. Or there ain't no way you're going to live happily ever after. How are you doing, Penny? Pretty good. I'm waiting on Candy's agent. She says I can see him tonight. I've got someone even better for you to meet. You do? I've got a real producer who wants to help you. I've never really acted before. But I've watched TV all the time. And I've seen how it's done. See, I watched a little girl in the Waltons, Elizabeth. I could be like her. This man can make you a bigger star than she is. All you have to do is go with him and do what he tells you. It's all I ever wanted. All right, then. You come to my apartment at 5 o'clock. And uh, don't tell Candy about this. You're prettier than she is. And you know it would hurt her feelings if she knew. Oh, it's a word. Thanks a lot.
May I, or uh, will your stomach require both seats? Sure, sure. Want one? Oh, pass. Not all of us are lucky enough to uh, sweat off calories for living. Yeah, sad, isn't it? <laughs> you hear the uh, news about Jackson and Dolores? No. They're yeah, getting married. Dum, dum, da, dum, 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 da, dum. Married? When? According to Jackson, as soon as he graduates. When did all this happen? I don't know. He came running into my office all flurried and flustered this morning to tell me that she'd accept it. Oh, well, I ran into her yesterday at the market. She was stuffing food into her purse. Why? Obviously, she was hungry, and just as obviously, she was broke. But I thought models made as much as basketball players, if not more. Yeah, well, they do, if they're working. Well, how's she living? I mean, you don't set yourself up in an apartment with fancy clothes and a waitress's salary. Well, maybe she's having a lean period. I don't know. But if she is down to stealing food, I think it's about time someone started talking to her about finding some sort of alternative. Who is it? Miss Buchanan, Dolores. Hi, I hope I haven't caught you at a bad time. That's okay. Come on in, I was just lying down. Well, I was on my way home, and I thought I'd drop by to uh, congratulate you. Thank you. I love Curtis very much. Oh, I'm sure you do. So tell me, have you two come up with any kind of a game plan yet? Uh, aren't you going to answer that? No. I I I've been getting a lot of crank calls lately. It'll stop in a minute. Dolores, are you all right? You know, I can call the police if you No, that's all right. I'll... There. It stopped. It's okay. Can I get you something, a cup of coffee or anything? No, thanks. Curtis Dolores... has been talking about us having babies just as soon as we're married. I told him a pregnant model isn't good for much. But uh, if it's what he wanted when the time comes, I'd quit. Are you modeling now? Every day. Are you? What is that supposed to mean? Dolores, I saw you taking food from the supermarket. Now, if you really are modeling... Of course I'm modeling. Of course I am. What are you trying to say? Well, only that if you have to steal food, Look, something is... Look, I think is... you better go. Dolores... You, you, don't, you don't know anything. Now, I'm doing fine. Dolores! Dolores! Charlie, baby, open up. Don't open it. What is the matter with you? It's Tuesday nights, Charlie. I got a hundred dollars. I promise I won't hurt you this time. Are you out of it now? Yes, for good. What are you going to do? Get a job. Waitressing, maybe. Until June. Until Curtis graduates. Does he know what you've been doing the past year? No. Are you going to tell him? No, I'm not. Now, Dolores. I love him, Miss Buchanan, with all my heart. I know you do. I know. But you've got to tell it. I can't. Now, listen to me, Dolores. Marriage is a tough enough proposition in itself. To make a commitment like that, even with a, a clean slate, is tough enough. But to get into it with something like this hanging over your head. Curtis Jackson is all I have left in this world. If I tell him, I'll lose him. And if Curtis ever does find out, and there's a good chance he could someday, you will lose everything. Your husband, 
your marriage, your baby. I love him more than I love myself. Then you have to tell him. Curtis, I've got something I've got to tell you. Okay. Something that's hard to say, but that you gotta know. Something I would give anything in this world to change if I could. Hey, what's the matter, baby? What's, what's going on there? I'm a prostitute. Curtis, I love you. Is he here? Is he here yet? No, not yet. How do I look? Do I look okay? You look fine. Well, that's good. Because I want to look good for my producer. Are you going somewhere? Mm-hmm. Where? Anywhere. Now, you wait here for Calvin. He'll be around in a half hour or so. I'm not gonna move until that door opens. Get what you want out of the refrigerator. <sighs> nope. I want to watch my weight. So I look good on stage. Go home. What? You're not going with him. But I am. No, you're not. Because he ain't no producer. He's a pimp. Do you know what a pimp is? He's somebody that does what I was about to do. Sell flesh. Your flesh. Something that's been done to me a hundred times the past year. Something has just cost me the most important thing in my life. He's a pimp, got it? Get out of here. Get yourself back to that small town of yours and don't you ever, never come back. Where are you going? I said, where are you going? The lady's going home, buddy boy. Don't go with him. Let it go, Curtis. Look, I love you. No matter what... I've got to go. Look, we can work it out. I promise we can work it out. 
The lady says she's going. Now split, brother. No, Curtis, no! Let it go. It's over with. It could never work. Listen to me. Maybe for a month, two months, you could fool yourself. But that's all. That look on your face, the hurt and the hate, it would come back again and again. Let it go. It's what I want. It's what I want. Let it go. Why would you wreck a perfectly beautiful relationship by getting it all back together again? What, are you pregnant? Yeah. I thought I'd cancel practice today and uh, throw a little Christmas party. Where's the chicks? Uh, there's no chicks, Jackson. Uh, here, have a cookie. What I need from you is a real commitment. And that's the one thing you've been unwilling or unable to give me. Where you get it, man? Faking what? Have ax, we'll travel. And the, uh, baby? I'm gonna have it by myself. Institutional Christmas. I love it. Yeah, well, unfortunately, Christmas decorations are not included in the school budget. Yeah, well, the Unemployment Bureau is more festive than this. Look at those decorations. They're older than you are. Older than me? Yeah. It's so hard to believe? Come on, where you can? Ah, it's Christmas. Merry Christmas, Sue. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, uh, weren't we supposed to have a meeting this morning? Yeah, well, I had some business to take care of. Personal? Yeah, as a matter of fact. What kind of business? 
The concept of personal is personal. Oh, yes, how foolish of me. So what's on your holiday agenda, huh? Well, Buddy and I are going down to Mexico to do some long-awaited snorkeling. Now, what about yourself? I'll be spending it with Bill and Katie. <laughs> Always tagging along, huh? And you, Sybil? Doug and I are going out for dinner. Oh, that's nice. Couldn't he find anything better to do? <laughs> Don't laugh. You only encourage him. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Christmas in California, man. What are you, nuts? I'm telling you, Christmas in New York is Christmas. Christmas in Los Angeles is Easter. You gotta have snow and the green. Hey, you gotta have green for Christmas, man. That's the yeah. fact. Come on, Jocko, man, take it easy. Well, you'll all be happy to know that I bought my presents early. Who is? July. You talking about the case of firecrackers you ripped off from the fireworks show? Yeah, and them and some cherry bombs, too. Hey, you guys wouldn't be interested in the uh, case of Christmas spirits I got lined up, would you? A party! Yeah! yeah. 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 All right! Yeah. Well, where's it gonna be? What about Salami's place? He's got the biggest icebox. Oh, no, forget it, man. Why? Because my father's sister's brother's old lady's coming in from Newark. Who? Our aunt. Man, your family tree needs a prune job. Well, dig it, man. Where are we gonna have this thing, anyway? I mean, ain't nobody's folks gonna be out on Christmas Eve. Here's it all. Say, Philip, uh, doesn't your mother work the graveyard shift at Dollinger's cafeteria? Yes, no way. Way. Yeah, no way. Yeah, no way. How you doing, Carl? Oh. Hello. Oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. We've been married for four years. Can't you show a little dignity in public? Well, since we've been separated for the past two, we consider ourselves now back at the dating stage. Oh. <laughs> what are we walking towards? Oh, this is it? Uh -huh. Oh, that's nice. How's the newspaper business? Well, it's not real estate. Oh, but... come on, you love it. Do <laughs> hey, me a favor. Will you, will you tell the guys at the sports desk to take it easy on the Bulls, please? Why don't you tell the Bulls to win a few games? They've already got a new coach. Oh, I see what I can do now. Do me a favor. A paper's having a big basketball game next Tuesday afternoon with Sports Illustrated, and we could sure use a ringer. Hey, what's in it for me? A couple of beers. You're on. All right, all right. I'll call you. All right, we'll see you guys. Okay, take care now. Bye-bye, Ken. Bye -bye. Right on. So how's my lady? Oh, I'm terrific. Terrific. I look terrific. Could <laughs> be better. Oh, I almost forgot. What? I need a kiss. A, a kiss? <laughs> Hi. My goodness, are you in a good mood? Yeah, why not? It's Christmas. Oh, that's right, baby. It'll be five years this Christmas Eve that we met. That's right. It was uh, Betty's party, right? Right, right. Yeah. Okay, look. I hereby declare this coming Christmas Eve as our anniversary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I also figured we could do some last-minute window shopping, and then how about some Italian food? Uh, I can't. Well, why not, baby? I've got a previous engagement. Oh, with that guy you've been seeing on the slide and haven't been telling me about? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh, I thought so. <laughs> so why don't you just drop me off at the garage? Uh, my car should be ready by now, and I'll meet you at the restaurant later. Previous engagement. You can't fool me. What you giving me for Christmas? <laughs> oh, come on. You're too old for presents. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Bill, you're wonderful in the kitchen. Be a homebody. Listen, I plan to make the stuffing this year. So you guys take care of the turkey, and I will personally make my famous Ken Reeves original stuffing with mushrooms and garlic and uh, chestnuts. Ken. Oh, I insist. It'll be good. Just wait. Hey, well, that's not exactly it. Uh, Bill and I are going to spend Christmas with Bill's grandmother in North Dakota. What? You, well, it was a last-minute thing. You gotta be joking. Oh, she sent us the tickets. Yeah, uh, wait, if she sent you tickets to Juarez, would you go? I mean, it's North Dakota. Nobody lives in North Dakota. They're the largest city you could put in the back of a Chevy van. You're more than welcome to come with us. You know that. No, no, that's all right. Ken, I mean it. No, no, really, I'd rather pass. I mean, <laughs> it's North Dakota, and besides, it's your family. <sighs> Where else but California would a car overheat five days before Christmas? <clears throat> Hey, this ain't no limousine service. If you guys don't like it, you can walk. As if we got a choice. 
Hey, well, it's over there anyway. That's it. That's what? I gotta have it. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me we came all the way down here for a doll? Hey, look, cool. If you need a date for New Year's, I mean, go after something that moves. It's for my sister, stupid. She wants it for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, but it costs, man. Look, 60 bucks. Now, nobody's worth 60 bucks. Hey, if that's what my baby sister wants for Christmas, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah? Yeah. What are you going to use to pay for it? Your fillings? That's have to give me a job. this piece of junk here? No! Well, who did? My chauffeur! Yeah, well, where's the fat head? Well, uh, not really that, you know, it's okay. It's all right, you know, it's nice car. Do not move, monsieur. You are covered on all sides. I've been watching you from across the room, and I find it impossible to keep my hands off you. Well, I can understand that, mademoiselle. You can? Sure. Women find me irresistible. <laughs> well, this one does. Mm, I see what I'd have to see. Hi. <laughs> my goodness, you've been bubbly, bubbly all day. You know that man I went to see today? Oh, yeah, the one you see on the slide. You wouldn't believe the things he whispered in my ear. So, but what's going on? Well, first of all, I think we need to order some champagne. Busy? Very. Oh, the natives are restless. They can smell vacation. Mm -hmm. What is this? Huh? Sportsman catalog. I need some fins and a new mask. Hmm. You really into this frogman stuff? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, come on with the funnies. Well, you got work to do. Well, you know, I was thinking, what the hell? Why don't I go out in Mexico with you, check out this fishy stuff? And if not, that is always uh, tequila. Not a chance. Why not? Well, you see, we're staying down in this small little pension-type place that's been booked solid for months. Booked? Solid. Oh! Well, I mean, if I knew you were interested, I would have made a reservation. Oh, look, it's no big deal. Uh, maybe some other time. Sit. Why? Sit, sit, sit. Well? I have something very special I want to share with you, too. I am pleased to announce, after a long separation, the impending reunion of Mr. and Mrs. Buchanan. Reconciliation? Oh. That's right. Oh. You and uh, Fred? No, me and Doug. <laughs> oh, you and Doug? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Why would you wreck a perfectly beautiful relationship by getting it all back together again? What, are you pregnant? Yeah. You pregnant? Mm-hmm. Eight weeks' worth. That's fantastic. How did the old man take it? Here, uh, sit. Oh, thanks. Yeah. He was very pleased. <sighs> you know, I can't believe it. After all this time, I'd just about given up motherhood as a lost cause. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, let's face it, 33 is not 23. Have you always wanted to have a kid? Yeah. More than anything in the world. Well, except for Doug. Anyway, I wanted you two to know before the uh, student grapevine picked it up. Sybil, I'm really happy for you. I'm happy for you too, darling. Thank you, guys. Oh, by the way, if anyone should need, want, or desire me, they'll have to wait until tomorrow. I'm spending the afternoon with my husband. Ta-da!
Well, how about that? Are you sure you're up for this? I'm sure. I mean, uh, wouldn't you like to try something more strenuous, such as uh, a game of gin rummy, some checkers, <laughs> scrabble, something like that? Don't be silly. I'm not sick. I'm pregnant. It's not a disease. Right, right. Exercise is the best thing in the world for a pregnant woman. Oh, wow. How oh, I love to say that. I love to hear you say it. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. I have a present for you. Another diamond ring. A pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Pregnant women love pickles, you'll see. Uh -huh. Well, my doctor says I should stay in shape. After all, I am heading for the baby bowl. You know, I think I'll start spending some more time with the basketball team, you know, really working out. <laughs> That's gonna make Ken's day. <laughs> hey, Doug. You won't hate me when I'm fat, will you? Oh, come on. The more simple there is, the more there is to love. You know what? What? I love you. That's because I gave you a pickle. <laughs> come on. Two. Hot. Four. Hot. Two. Two. Four. Four. Hot. Two. Four. 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 Remember, I borrowed a dollar from you last April. You already paid me. So what? I pay you again. I know a bribe when I see one. Phil, man, uh, what exactly do you plan to be doing on Christmas Eve anyway? Studying. Studying? Man, you already got A's. What are you going for, double A's? It ain't no exacta. You live your life, Coolidge. I live mine. Hey, man, what do you got against partying? Outside of them being a waste of time, nothing. Yeah? Yeah. You ever been to one? Of course I have. Fools. Huh? Oh, man. Look, my mother wouldn't go for food. Hey, she's not even home. She'll never know. She will, too. How? It'll show on my face. Oh, come on, brother. You in high school or grade school, man. I mean, you know. Hey, hey. Hey, calm down. Phil. Phil, buddy. You're 17 years old now. I mean, a quarter of your life has passed by, maybe even half. You got to go for the gusto now. Look, my mother's not going to go for it, and that's all there is to it. Man, talk about still being tied to the apron strap. 17-year-old man, that ain't healthy. Yeah, we're gonna have to break through to this brother that this is too good to be missed. I think his mother's the only woman in his life. Think. She is, brother. That's the problem. That's also the solution. Oh, no. No, no. no. Okay, dig it. Plan B, man. Morris Thorpe said that you were looking for me. Huh? Oh, excuse me? You wanted to talk to me. I did? About the party. The party? Christmas Eve. I'd love to go. You would? With you. Great. Okay. What time? Eight o'clock. Fine. Nancy. Where? Where's what? This party. <sighs> See you Christmas Eve. Let's see. A party? 
I can't give a party. I don't anything about giving parties. Besides, my mother'll kill me. How could you guys do this to me? Uh, Phil, come on, man. It'll be a blast. It can't be a blast. Blast means noise. Blast means broken things. Blast means trouble. All right, Phil. So, uh, forget about it. What? We won't come. Yeah, it's more like it. Yeah, you can handle Nancy by yourself. And it'll be so quiet you could hear a nervous heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I changed my mind. Nah, forget it. Wait a minute. You can't leave me alone. I've never been alone with anyone like that before. I mean, Nancy's... She's a full-figured lady. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, fellas, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Should we or should we not? No, 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 no. I mean, no. all right, all right. But remember, you owe us one, a big one. Really? That's right, That's brother, right. you owe us yeah. one. Remember, yeah, big one. you owe us one. It means you have a good time. clean right. towels, soap oh. in the showers, and get all that junk. Bath. You know? Five minutes past five. Working the night shift, huh? Yeah. Well, you feature writers really have it made, you know? Punch out all day and then you rack it up to story research. Yeah. Uh, what's with you? You got a moment? Sure. Well, Sybil and I are getting back together. Uh, wait, you, together, you mean together? That's what I said. <laughs> well, that takes some guts. You two gave it a shot for, what, two years? Yeah, that's what it was, two years. And Well, now, man, I kind of got some doubt. You know, it's hard enough taking care of myself. Hey, and... look, <laughs> you don't have to tell me. You're talking to a two-time loser. Yeah, I know, I know. Listen, Doug. If a horse kicks you once, it's an accident, no? If you give him a chance to do it again, you're a fool. Wait a minute, I don't want you to get me wrong. Now, Sybil is one hell of a lady. Look, I don't, I don't doubt it for a minute. And, and you got something really good going with it right now, huh? All right, okay, then I ask you. As a two-time loser to a one-time loser, why let the institution of marriage wreck it? Well, because I love her and, well, she's pregnant. Don't you mean because she's pregnant and because you love her? Whatever. Yeah. You know, you're out of your mind. You're gonna reconcile because of a pregnancy? Now, just a minute. You know, I want my kid to have a father. Yeah, and you two ought to have your sanity. Do you have any idea how many marriages fail because they start over a kid? Okay, Steve, I know the numbers on that Yeah, trip. right. Hey, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. Huh? Don't say you weren't warned, huh? Bye. Yes? Uh, yes, I'm looking for a job for Christmas. <laughs> well, you are a little late. Well, I got here as soon as I could. I had basketball practice. All our part-time positions were filled several weeks ago. Are you kidding? I'm sorry. Try before Easter. I can't wait till Easter. I gotta get a job now so I can buy my presents. See, this is doll my little sister is dying to have, and let's say I sort of promised her that I'd... Well, anyway, it costs $60, and it doesn't talk or nothing. It's just big. I'm very sorry. Is there anything? Cleaning floors, wrapping gifts? I mean, I can wrap things real good. You name it, I'll do it. There is one position open. I'll take it. It just opened up this morning. I decide when I start. Don't you want to know what it is? It doesn't matter as long as it pays. Whoa, 
haven't been this hungry in 10 years. <laughs> I haven't walked this much in 10 years either. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, from now on, all of us are going to walk one mile every morning. Yeah. All of us? You know, all three of us. Uh, the family that plays together, et cetera, et cetera. You want some wine, sweetheart? Ah, uh, no, thanks. Were you able to get those papers you needed at work? Yeah. I also had a long talk with Steve Carey, one of the sports writers. Oh, yeah? I hope you put in a good word for the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. <laughs> he is one funny guy. When I told him about you and I getting back together, he just freaked, man, and just gave me an earful. Yeah, confirmed bachelor, huh? Well, he calls himself, uh, what is it now, a veteran of two domestic wars, marriage one, marriage two. Oh, I guess that would tend to sour him a bit. <laughs> I mean, some of the things that he was saying, like, uh, when was it up? Oh, yeah, he could no more see you and I getting back together than his getting married for a third time. That if we were happy now in this situation, why ruin it? What did you say? Well, oh, simple, what could I say? I was talking to a two-time loser. And these wild analogies he was making about being kicked by horses and and uh, that maybe this was a mistake yet. We just wanted too much too soon. And you said? Well, I really couldn't argue with the man, could I? I mean, the first two years of our marriage was a total disaster. Yeah, uh, well, uh... This should be ready in about 20 minutes. I mean, those two years are the worst I've ever experienced, and I do not want to go through that again. I just want to be happy. Hey, we are going to check out the cheerleaders at Crenshaw this afternoon, man. Are you interested? I'm busy. Doing what? Working. Man, this must be one hard-up department store. <laughs> <laughs> what they got you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, where can I get that job? <laughs> I mean, I don't know yet. They haven't decided. Hey, Bill, what you got in the bag? Man? Oh, you better keep clear unless you want to sleep through New Year's. Woo! Woo! Oh. Woo! Hey, even money says they got him cleaning toilets. So heavy. Oh, please, could it? Toilets. Hey, 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 hey. Hey! Hey! Crazy! So what do you think? That you got more steer manure in your car than I thought. <laughs> Where you get it, man? Bacon light. Have axe, we'll travel. <laughs> oh, you can't do that, man. You can't just go chopping down trees in vacant lots. Oh, yeah? You want to bet? <laughs> so what'd you bring it here for? To decorate it. Nikki figures we'll set it up in the corridor and decorate it. With a few personable mementos, of course. Like what? Like just for openers. Wendy Wagner's soon to be famous. Purple panties! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. 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 Heal! Heal Thorpe! Okay, man, where is he? Hey, man, he'll show up. You sure, Gomez? Yeah, I'm sure. Hey, is that him? That's hey, Julio, him. over here. Hurry up. Come on. How's he going, Gomez? All right, how you doing, man? Everything's all right, man. Always one step ahead of the cops. What you do, man? It's not what I've done. It's what they know I can do. Hey, man, Julio's going to be a safe cracker. Yeah, instead of going to college? What, is he a cop? No, he's Goldstein. Goldstein? I think I know a cop named Goldstein. I got an uncle in Philadelphia. Uh, listen, Julio, we haven't got much time between classes, so can you get on with it? Oh, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Give the man some working space. This one here. Little music for the nerves. Juan Talamera. Juanita, guantalame, guantalame. Uh-huh. 36 to the right. My mother's lucky number to the left. Good old 22. Uh-huh. My baby's birthday to the right. Oh, all right. right. Piece of cake. Hey, you go far. You think so? Yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Let's see what he got up in here, man. Oh, 
no. <laughs> Not <laughs> cool. <laughs> So, uh, who's come up with what for the tree? Hey, how would Mr. Brothers spare rug do? <laughs> <laughs> you clipped his hair? Hey, man, the dude's got less treads on his head than you got on your tires. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. How about Debbie Skilling's Innermost Lustings for one James Haywood, as written to Cinda Robinson and intercepted by me? Whoa. Eat your heart out, though, Steve. <laughs> well, if it isn't Mr. Christmas himself. I thought we agreed on total secrecy on this thing. So? So, somebody here has been talking. Rumors are all over the place about some party Christmas Eve. Anybody know where yet? No, not yet. Not yet, huh? Look, I'm telling you, if word gets out to anybody else and my mother finds out... Oh, Phil, man. Okay, you animals, chow time. What's this? Meals on wheels? <laughs> I don't know, Salami. It's just I've been working you guys pretty hard this year. So just to prove that I do have a heart, I thought I'd cancel practice today and uh, throw a little Christmas party. <laughs> All right. Hey. When and where? Right here, Coolidge. Now, here. It is. Hey, um, where's the chicks, Coach? Uh, there's no chicks, Jackson. Uh, here, have a cookie. Vanilla cookies? I hate vanilla cookies. Uh, what is this stuff? Fruit punch. Bug juice? You mean there ain't no punch in the punch? And you call this a party? Punch and cookies. Real cute. Yeah, well, I know it's not much, but it's leading up to something a lot bigger. Lead up for what, bobbing for apples? <laughs> <laughs> no, Christmas Eve dinner on me, if anybody's interested. Uh, didn't you hear me? Read my lips. I said on me. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Coach, but uh, I won't be able to make it, but thanks. Yeah, and I'm booked. Yeah, I got a date with a couple of stockings. <laughs> Nylons. <laughs> <laughs> Who asked you? No chicks. No booze. Some party. <laughs> well, may as well practice. Yeah. <laughs> may as well. Let's run some laps. Want to run some laps, you guys? Let's yeah. run hard. Let's, Let's run die. Run. Ken, I got some fine beer for you. So I expect a very serious effort out of you, man. I want to see a lot of elbows and some body blocks and a few trips, huh? I always play like I've always played. Hey, we need to win. Is always this underhanded? Always. Tell him, Sybil. A high-class lady never stoops to such lows. Well, if you're such a high-class lady, what are you doing with a bum like him? Well, accidents can happen. Keep your eyes on the road, dear. Uh, so has an actual uh, moving-in date been set already? No. Yes. Well, we figured around the first week in January. The fifth, I thought. Fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm glad that's cleared up. <laughs> nah, it's just like a woman wanting to get everything buttoned down. I mean, it's bad enough you're roping a perfectly good man back into a marriage. What is that supposed to mean? What? What? I didn't rope anybody into anything. Well, so anyway, uh, it's a nice day. Hey, coach. What do you say, Phil? I thought you took off hours ago. Yeah, well, I did, but I had to come back and get my wallet. Gee, it's a shame they don't pay you by the hour. I'm almost through. You don't know, have the time. You lock up this place later than I do. I don't mind. No? No, my mother works nights, and I hate going home to an empty house, so I usually hang out here for a while. She work every night? Yeah. Well, uh, what kind of plans have you made around the house for Christmas Eve? What? You know, nothing, I swear. Nothing? No, really. Well, uh, why don't you and I go out for a little Christmas Eve dinner? Maybe we'll catch a movie, something like that? Oh, no, I, I couldn't do that. Why not? Uh, it's my mother. But I thought you said she was working. Uh, well, she is. But it's the uh, lady next door, um, mm -hmm. Mrs. Gordon. She's uh, a crippled widow, blind in one eye. Uh, I take care of her every Christmas Eve till my mother gets home. 
Yeah? Oh, yeah. I, we live around my house, and we sit around and drink eggnog and sing Christmas carols to each other, and it's just a great time. Really? Oh, yeah. Every year. Especially this year. Why especially? It's her 98th birthday. On Christmas? The whole year. Yeah. 98 years old. That's old. Yeah. You're quite a fellow, Phil. Merry Christmas. Thank you. swerved into an oil tank truck on the San Diego freeway, causing the tanker to overturn and block rush hour traffic for approximately two hours. You're late. Well, the hot water was off in my building. I had to wait to take a shower. Anyway, I called and you weren't here. Yeah, well, I was out. I was, uh, I was walking. Yeah, well, I figured you'd be here since you said you wanted to eat before we went to the movies. I don't feel like going to a movie right now. I, uh, also talked with my super. And I told him that you'd be moving in soon. Wait, no. wait a minute. What do you mean, moving in? Moving in like a husband and wife. But you're moving in here. Why? Well, because I just moved in. It's roomier, and I, I feel a lot more comfortable. That doesn't make any sense at all. First of all, my apartment is much cheaper, and it has just as much room as this place. Yeah, well, I want to stay here. Yeah. And what Sybil wants, Sybil gets. Oh, come on, Doug. I am the one who's pregnant. Yeah, like I said, what Sybil wants, Sybil gets. And what do you mean by that? Forget it. Uh, Doug, what are you saying? Are, are you saying that I plan this pregnancy? No, no, I'm not saying you plan the pregnancy, but I am saying that it seems as if everything we do is planned around it, though. Oh, I see, and you've got a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, I got problems with that. What are you saying, Doug? I'm saying, Sybil, that I'm a liver, not a planner. Oh, well, I'm very sorry that things have changed and that your style's become somewhat cramped. Oh, come on, Sybil. Will you stop with the sarcasm, please? I mean, look, we're getting back together. You're pregnant. We're gonna live happily ever after. Is that what you want? What? For us to get back together. Sure. Why? Because you're pregnant. Because I'm pregnant. Would you want it now if I wasn't pregnant? Oh, Sybil, come on, please forget it. It's settled. Would you? No. What do you think it was that brought the heat into it? Well, could have been the uh, coach's athletic supporter. Yeah, could have been. I got to talk to you. I don't think I can go through with it. With what? The party. You guys can still use the house. It's just that I don't think I'm going to be there. What do you mean not going to be there? You got to be there. It's your party. She's too much for me, Haywood. I mean, I spent the whole night in the toilet. Phil, come here. I want to talk to you. All right, now, listen to me. Look, I, I didn't sleep at all last night. Look at these eyes. I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't read. On the way to school this morning, I was crossing hey, the street. Phil, get a hold of yourself. Pull yourself together. You don't understand. Ah. You've got what it takes. Phil, trust me on this. I know about these things. You have got what it takes. Ah. Now, I want you to go to the library, sit in your favorite seat, and read. I can't read. Then look at the pictures, okay? Okay. 
Okay. Good man. Good man. a story for you. Do you know how Phil Jeffers is spending his Christmas Eve? With a crippled, one-eyed, 98-year-old widow. It was all I could do to fight the tears back. Just picturing him wheeling her around their little apartment just so she could get a glimpse of the tree with the one good eye. It's enough to break your heart. So I kept thinking, what could I possibly do to make their Christmas a little brighter? And then it hit me. I'm going to surprise both of them with a turkey and my own homemade dressing. You know, these are supposed to be fog-proof. What? The mask, the face mask. For crying out loud, I'm trying to tell you a heart-wrenching story. Yeah, well, as of 15 minutes ago, I went on vacation. And right now, I'm 20,000 leagues under the sea. Oh, yeah? Here. You got your wetsuit. <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you at work. Hey, that's okay. <clears throat> I was gonna call you yesterday, but I just got swamped. You have to pay for it. Well, I think we both needed a day to kind of sort things out. I know I did. Yeah. Doug, I don't think we should go through with the reconciliation. I don't think you're ready for it. Do you? I don't know. Well, I guess I have to take that as a no. Look, Sybil, it's not like I don't love you. Just not enough. And it's got to be more than enough. Otherwise, it'll fail again. Yeah, I know that. So, um, what now? We'll get divorced. Oh. And the, uh, baby? I'm gonna have it by myself. Have you for once considered the problems of having a baby by yourself? <laughs> Doug, it's settled. I'm gonna have it. Why don't you stop and see the reality of this thing? The reality is I am 33 years old and I want this child. Well, I don't. I don't. I, I mean, I don't right now. I know that. Which is why I'm gonna have it by myself. Now, wait a minute. I got some rights to the baby. Now, just mind. stop it. Stop it. Now, please, don't do this to me. I'm ready to be a mother. Can't you understand that? I want to be a mother. Simple. <sighs> wait a minute, wait a minute, please. You will be, but, but just wait until we're both ready. No, Doug. I can't. Because that's never gonna happen. I know you love me, but can't you understand that's not enough? What I need from you is a real commitment. And that's the one thing you've been unwilling or unable to give me. Sybil. I have to go. Please, don't say anything more. Sybil. Donations. Donations for all God's children. Merry Christmas. Donations. Donations for all God's children.
offer a donation in the spirit of Christmas. So Merry Christmas and have a joyous Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Would you like to join us? Oh, no, no, thank you. We've got some hot cider. Keeps your throat warm. No, 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 no thank you. Okay, too bad. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Silent night. Oh. I'd like to talk to you for a second. I want to come back home, and I'm committed to being your husband and the father of our child. And, uh, I love you, Sobo Buchanan. for Christmas, little girl? A jacuzzi. A jacuzzi? Well, Santa don't know much about Italian sports cars, but he'll see what he can do. Anything else? A turtle. A turtle? What color? Purple. Purple. Same color as the jacuzzi, right? Okay. Okay. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Santa. Merry Christmas, Santa. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. What's your name, little boy? Warm. That's a great name. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's Santa's name. It is? Uh-huh. Mm, that's funny. So have you been a good boy this year, Juan? Pretty good. Hmm, well, I guess that's OK with Santa. So what do you want for Christmas? Just one thing. Just one thing. And what is that? Basketball. That's a good choice, Juan. And you know what? I'm gonna climb down your chimney tonight while you're sleeping and put a brand new basketball underneath your tree, okay? Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Warren Santa Claus. Merry Christmas, Warren. 362636, 36, and don't bother to wrap it. Get out of here, man. Get Hey, Santa, you need a nose job. Yeah. <laughs> Come sit on my lap, Salami. No, no, sorry, not right now. We got a party to go to. That's right. Hey, hey yeah, let's get... Hey, look, Santa, you, uh, you gonna drive down to the party with us, or you'd rather take a slow sleigh ride with your Wayne dear? Ho, ho, ho. You know, when Santa goes to the party, and he will, He's going to punish them. 